Um, I'm May Singleton Khan. My project has been on portraiture, and I've painted three portraits. Um, my research has been on examining the balance that portraits strike between the desires of the subject and the desires of the artist about the portrait. So that can often influence style and the technique that the artist uses, and um, it shows through in portraits. Um, so I've there in an essay that Cynthia Freeland wrote, um, she has four criteria for a portrait. Um, the portrait has to show the living being as a unique individual by individually recognizable physical traits. The portrait must be an expression of inner life in the subject showing self-identity. The subject has to be aware of the project and um, agreeing to it. And the portrait has to show the subject's individual essence. Um, these are two drawings, head studies. One of them, the first one, is I wouldn't consider a portrait because while it does show the expressive style and the talent of the artist, it doesn't show the subject as an individual. It shows kind of generic old man. You know, you couldn't tell this subject apart from a lot of other people. And the second one, it shows him specifically, you know, it shows kind of his unique essence and it shows a lot more about him as a person than the first one. Um, there's, in this, well, you can't see this. This is a line drawing. It's more, you know, quick. It doesn't really show, it, it doesn't, you know, show that he knows that there's a portrait being done of him. It doesn't show that he has agreed to the project and doesn't really show him as a specific individual, whereas the this one on the right shows, um, you know, this person is aware that the portrait's being done of him and he, well, I, he doesn't really look happy about it, but he, he knows that it's happening and seems to be agreeing with it. Um, and it shows him, you know, being more unique. And, um, can I just use the, okay. This is a self-portrait by Egon Schiele. Um, he, he used a, he was called an expressionist. He used a style which was not realistic, um, but did show the form in a recognizable way. But he um, he tended to exaggerate and kind of make it make people look a little more gross. He kind of exaggerated the flaws, and it was it's clearly a self-portrait. It's you know it's distinctly him, but he wouldn't obviously look like this in real life. And this is a different style from John Singer Sargent, who in his portraits he used a lot of realism and he kind of, you know, beautified people because that's what the subjects wanted. Egon Schiele didn't really, you know, take into account as much what the subject wanted. It was more about his self-expression, you know, in the self-portrait and in his other portraits. But um, John Singer Sargent, there's a much bigger difference between the work that he did personally for himself, just, you know, whatever style he wanted, and the work that he did as a commissioned portrait. This is um, one of his paintings that he did just, you know, for himself. He didn't, it wasn't commissioned, he just did it. And you can see a difference in the style because you can see through the, um, the types of lines he uses and how they're not, not everything is completely photorealistic and there's, it's more impressionist and kind of, you know, separating shapes and colors into blocks and kind of not using the realistic colors and shapes and um, these are, this is another one of his paintings that he did, you know, for himself and he kind of simplifies and he, he uses the realistic proportions but he doesn't always you, he, he'll simplify blocks of shadow and blocks of light. And um, this is, he carried this over into his portraiture some, but in, he always kept it really realistic in the faces. And um, this was also not a commission. And, you know, it's, it, this is a good one to compare to some of his commissioned portraits because it, it does have the people's faces. And, you know, it's much more expressive and the lines are much more loose and less controlled 
This was um, a study that he did for the mural project in the Boston Public Library, The Triumph of Religion. This is in um, a panel about hell. And this, is, this sketch is titled Man Screaming. And it's much more well, violent and um, expressive of human emotion than a lot of his portraits are. This is his, one of his most famous works, Madam X. Um, this woman, her name is Virginie Go Gautre, um, and he, this is the first portrait he did of her, but he did, over the course of his career, he did a lot of different paintings of her, and um, another subject of his they, they looked very similar. His, another subject was Albert de Belleroche. Um, and they, they had similar looks. And so, you know, as you can see, they have, you know, the same kind of pointed nose and delicate mouth and chin. And um, there, was, there was a trend in portraiture and just in popular culture at the time, I guess, to kind of to exaggerate gender stereotypes in portraits. They wanted to really separate men and women. And in a lot of his portraits, John Singer Sargent did conform to this trend. But um, in, in his portraits of um, Virginie Gautre and Albert Belaroche, he kind of blurred the lines between the genders. Because since they had such similar looks, he was able to take parts of one of their faces and, you know, pull it into his portraits of the other model. And um, so that was, that was more his, you know, his desires, his interests as an artist than the interests of his subjects. Um, should I just shut the computer down the slideshow? Yeah. Okay. Um, for my field work, I did these three portraits. Um, I don't think I can get them all up at the same time. But this was the first one I did. And um, so the style, I, these since they weren't commissioned, I really it was all up to me what style I wanted to do it in, um, and you know how I wanted the composition to look. So this is um, a close friend of mine, and he likes to play, he plays piano, and so I thought it would be a good composition, you know, both interesting to look at and um, it would show something about his personality that I couldn't necessarily get through if he were just sitting still like the other ones. Um, this one, both this one and this, this second one is of my father, and these first two were both a little harder to paint because I'm close with the subjects than this third one. Um, since I don't know this woman, I met her for the purpose of the project. Um, she lives in a senior center, and um, she was an artist. That was her career. So a friend of mine who volunteers at the senior center suggested that we meet, and I paint her for the portrait. And um, you know, I thought that was a great idea. So I went over there and drew her. And um, she drew me while I drew her. So that was really fun. But it was a lot less pressure since I don't know her personally outside of the purpose of painting her. Um, but these two, you know, a close friend and my father, there was kind of more and less pressure at the same time since I know them. And I know that knew that they were going to be seeing the finished product. And I knew that you know, they they knew how hard I was working on it, and I wanted, yeah. I, <laughs> um, but so this one I actually painted last, and this one I painted second. And um, I don't know if I can lean this up, but you can, if you look at this one, the last one, and then the middle one, you can see how my style changed. Not based on the subject, but based on how, how much I was painting. Um, this one has a much more kind of tight and controlled style. And then this one, I, I kind of exaggerated. And it, it's, like, it's a little looser with the brush strokes. And then this one, I really 
was able to just kind of paint more freely since I had gotten used to the type of painting. You can see that how some of the highlights are just one brush stroke. I knew right where I wanted to put it and I didn't have to move it around and play with more delicate brush strokes. Um, that uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, or, oh, um, <laughs> these at the top here are the initial sketches that I did for the portraits. I wanted to sketch them out to see what the composition would look like, what I wanted to do for the composition. Um, and I brought them in because I thought it would be helpful to see the process of um, doing the paintings. I This one I did, I don't know, over 10 sketches because <laughs> I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, how I wanted to fit the piano in. Um, I really liked drawing the piano, but realized that it, I, should, I should include enough of it so that it was clear and it read as a piano, but I really wanted to include more of the subject than of the piano so that it was really about him and the piano was something, an extension off of that, but not what the painting was about. Because I thought that would be more of a painting of a piano than an actual portrait. Um, this one, I, I did less of them because I, I had already decided what I wanted the composition to be. It's just, you know, him sitting in a chair. It doesn't, he has, he has this bird that my father has a bird who he spends a lot of time with when he's working from home and the bird is, you know, a, a part of him. He, he kind of goes everywhere with him in the house, and he's a very loud presence. Um, and so I included that because he is such a part of my father's everyday life. Um, and that, and that was the only real. I I wanted, I wanted the composition to just kind of focus on the figure and not really focus on the things around him. Um, the same with this last one. I didn't, I didn't really have a lot of time or space to choose a composition when I went to this senior center to draw her. She, you know, she was. They were like, well, this is the room that you can draw in. Um, we don't, you know, they didn't really have a lot of options. And since she was drawing too, they didn't really have, you know, she propped her drawing pad up on the arm of another chair. She didn't really have. It, it wasn't like a space designed for drawing and I didn't bring in a whole big easel or anything because um, I didn't want to get in the way too much but um, I just thought that a simple I just chose a simple composition for that um, and just did what was behind her because that was really what I had and um, that's uh, questions? questions? <laughs> um, the third portrait, I see such intensity in her eyes. Did you mean to have it, or is she staring right at you while she's drawing? Um, I, I did that intentionally, but it is a product of the fact that she's drawing. She hadn't really drawn or done any art in a while since she's been living in the senior center, and so she was actually really frustrated with the way her drawing was coming out. and. Um, that's where the intensity is coming from. She's concentrating really hard, and she really wants it to turn out well, but she doesn't have the practice that she used to. So that's, I, I included that intentionally, but um, th because that's how she looked, and that, that was because she was drawing. In the media you used? Oil paint. Oil. Yes? Did you paint from life, or did you paint from drawing? Um, for this one of Rose, the woman in the senior center, I had to paint from the drawing because I you can't really take oil paint into a senior center. There are you know, people who have respiratory issues and I wasn't going to bring all the chemicals in. So I did the painting of her from the drawing. The other two I did from life because I had the option and uh, when I have the choice between it the two I always choose to draw from life because I think it you lose some stuff you lose some parts of the subject in translation from either another drawing or a photo. And, um, how did you 
how did doing this entire process affect you as an artist? Um, I think it improved my art. The last one I painted is my favorite. I think I felt the most comfortable with it and I, you know, I knew what I wanted to do and I knew how to paint better and it's, I think, really improved my painting. I don't particularly, there are a lot of things that I don't like about the way I painted this because it was the first one and I was still getting used to this type of painting and um, when, when I'm doing figure study on a regular basis my art always improves and um, I hadn't done you know oil paintings large portraits before and so that was new for me and I think that the you know the practice of looking at human <laughs> forms and drawing them and painting them um, really improved the rest of my art as well. It and gave me a better understanding. You want to get something of people to look at the picture and see what you saw. Mm -hmm. um, I've been trying to think about what I see in these two pictures. Can you tell me what you wanted to get out of the first picture your friend was playing the piano? Um, I guess the concentration and the focus that he puts into playing, you know, he like Rose when she was drawing often will get frustrated and really have an intensity that you can only get when you're trying really hard at something that you're good at and you care about but you can't get it right. And your father, the bird, was an important part of his life. Yeah. Um, I, this one kind of is more of, has more of a relaxed feeling I think just because it was, you know, he and I will sit in our house and talk sometimes and it's not, it wasn't really out of the ordinary and he, he looks a little sad I guess in this but um, it's more of a calm, relaxed feeling than either of the other two because he's not concentrating on an art that, or anything. yeah. Yes? Did you ask for the, the subjects of the paintings Um, we talked about it during, and Rose, since she didn't see, she she liked the the initial drawing that I did of her, but she didn't, she hasn't seen the final painting yet. Um, for Wyatt, my friend, and my dad, I asked their advice on the painting, and I asked what they thought of it during the process. But um, so they were they were involved. They weren't just sitting there and then. Leaving, it was it was we, it was a conversation. And one other question. Um, I just recently read a book called the Picture of Dorian Gray. I don't know if you I don't know if you've See read it. No. Um, I don't know if you've read the book, but the book has this list of kind of statements that he puts at the very beginning, and it's very similar. Uh, it evoked when you started presenting a lot of kind of what you're talking about, and the real premise of the book is that there is this painter who's struggling, um, but he has such a beautiful subject that he wants to do justice to the subject, and so he puts every ounce of himself into the portrait of this young man. And the, the effect is kind of like this supernatural, almost unrealistic, and some of the images you showed in your PowerPoint were a part of that. So um, if you haven't read it and you're, this seems to be of you know, great importance to you, it's a fantastic book uh, for the, the power of art and how the portrait comes to life. Oh, read it. Yeah. I understand that your presentation is focusing more on your art and the process involved in creating it. But what type of research did you do? What did you research? And how did your research, did your research affect your artwork? Um, a lot of my research was looking at other artists' work. Um, I, you know, I went to the MFA and I looked at a lot of stuff online and I looked at books of art um, and I, I wanted to you know see what how much of the artist came through in the paintings and how much of the subject came through and um, I, I you know read articles about it and there was there was an article by an essay by Dorothy Moss on the um, Madame X and Albert de Belleroche paintings that um, she she talked about his you know, the changes in his style um, based on, you know, who 
who he was painting and the, um, the differences between genders and gender roles. And I also read an article, I don't remember who it was by, but um, I, through looking at John Singer Sargent's work, I came to the conclusion that you know, his, the paintings that he did outside of not commissioned paintings, the paintings that he did you know, for his own personal gain um, were much more impressionist and more loose and relaxed and less photorealistic than his portraits. And um, I read an article that basically said the same thing and kind of, you know, added, said more than what I had initially thought about that. Um, so that was a lot of my research. Um, the year after next, I'm going to Mass Art. Next year, I'm working and taking classes at Mass Bay. Is um, oil painting your preferred art medium? Um, it is right now, but I want to experiment and try other media. I, you know, I haven't I haven't really tried a medium that I didn't like yet. Um, so I kind of I I want to continue to expand and find out what else I like doing, but oil paint is my favorite. I, it's what I've done most of because it's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.